The summer months are the perfect time to get in a few holes of golf. The city of Bowling Green offers three superior public golf courses for citizens to enjoy. In this edition of Spotlight on Bowling Green, we will take a closer look at the City Parks and Recreation Department's golf division and the improvements and changes that have been implemented. The City of Bowling Green has three municipal golf courses. The uh, first is our championship golf course, the, uh, the Crosswinds Golf Course. It's located in the, uh, the Heartland Business District. It's an 18-hole 18, 18 uh, course. Uh, it's right off Scottsville Road. Uh, plenty of, of, of area for, for individuals to play that. and It, it goes from the, from the best golfers uh, in our area can go, should go to that course all the way to the, to the general public uh, is welcome at, at Crosswinds Golf Course. Uh, then we have two nine-hole golf courses. One of those is the Paul Walker Golf Course. That's our oldest golf course, once again in the middle of town. It's our shortest course. A lot of walkers play this course. Uh, it's a little bit more condensed, uh, not quite the, uh, the length of some of our other courses. And then our third course is the, the golf course at Riverview. It's located at the end of, of Main Street uh, on the west side of town. Uh, great location, open spaces. Uh, gives a lot, of, a lot of area for people to hit the ball. Uh, a lot of wooded areas, a lot of natural uh, habitat. Although the courses are public, the quality is comparable or greater than that of private courses. The city courses focus on growing the game of golf and engaging the community. Well, the first uh, thing about how we differ from the, from the private courses is that uh, I want to point out that our quality is not different. Uh, our quality is just as good or better than any private course that you'll find in the country club around. Uh, we would, uh, uh, by all means, say that the quality of our golf courses matches or, or exceeds any other great course that you want to compare us to within this region uh, uh, of, of the state. And then the second thing of how we differ is that we do have memberships. We're also open to the public. We have to open tee times. Uh, anybody that comes into our, to our golf courses is welcome to pay. There's no membership fees required to, to play at our courses. So I think that's a huge thing to say, you know, we're, we're always going to be open to the public. We want the public to come out to play our courses. Uh, we want to uh, be receptive to the fact that they have a few open uh, hours of their schedule develops and to come out and, and spend their time with us. Uh, and the third thing is that we think it's instrumental that uh, we are uh, linchpins in, in growing the game of golf. Whether, uh, at whatever age that is, we want to make sure that we're, we're a major player in how, how the game is developed in this region. Uh, the Grow Golf Campaign is a major component of our operations, uh, and the first part of that is, is targeting the youth. Uh, we just think it's a natural thing that uh, the public golf courses should be a, a key component in how the game is developed in our area. One way we've found to do that is by not having the youth come to us, we're going to, we're going to take the game to the youth in the PE classes with local uh, schools within our region. We think that's a, a, a unique uh, way to look at it. So we're, we're partnering with the uh, city and county schools to uh, take uh, the game through the PE classes and actually work on uh, uh, bringing the game to some children that may never get a chance to pick up a golf club before, uh, before that. Uh, the next key of that is we're offering uh, free youth clinics, uh, one day, one hour type of, of deals. We do. Uh, a couple of those per month. Uh, the key thing about being free is that obviously we're trying to target individuals that just want to pick up the pick up a club for the first time, uh, want to see what the game is about, want to uh, to get involved in the game. And the other thing is we're starting at age five, so uh, the major participation is between five and eight for the, for our youth golf clinics. Uh, we think that's kind of a unique thing because obviously a five and eight year old is not going to be playing 18 holes anytime soon, but that doesn't mean that they won't be playing 18 holes uh, in the future. We have free summer camps. Those are uh, uh, two one-week sessions, one in June, one in July. Uh, we, uh, we're going to serve up to around 50 uh, children in both those camps. Uh, and we just want to make sure that uh, the children that, that take that next step from a clinic have a way to be involved on a daily basis for at least one week to kind of see what the game is more on a little bit more in-depth uh, basis. Uh, the next thing we have, we transition into adults. We go from youth to adults. Uh, not every uh, Every adult's ever played golf, and if they haven't, once again, we're going to offer free lessons to adults. Uh, we do, uh, uh, we've done one in the spring, we're going to do another in the summer, and we offer it up to 24 individuals. We do it either for females or for co-eds, so two different classes during that time frame. And uh, once again, it's just a way for any, uh, any adult, age 16 and up, that may have a desire to, to start the game, to see what the game is, to improve on a game that maybe they've played a few times, but they really had no idea what they were doing. Uh, that sort of thing. We're going to offer those adult lessons. Uh, our next step with the adult lessons is we're going to have adult clinics. Uh, this is where we target not just new golfers, but it could be experienced golfers too, because what we're going to do is take a, a specific portion of the game, like chipping or putting or driving, 
a short game, that sort of thing. We're going to offer that on a clinic, for a one-hour clinic, free of charge for anybody in the public to come out and basically get some tips on how to improve that, that portion of their game. In an effort to bring the game of golf to a wider audience, the city has developed several programs to encourage players to rediscover this popular sport. Yes, uh, as we transition from our lessons, we go into uh, more of our, uh, uh, some specific programs, I suppose. Uh, one of those, what we have a tee up forward, a tee up forward at all three courses. And that kind of takes the, uh, the lessons to the next step in that uh, we may have an experienced golfer that wants to play along with, with their child. What a way they can do that is tee up forward allows the, the child to uh, basically not tee off from 300 yards, they're gonna tee off from a, a shorter distance give them a, a shorter uh, club to use rather than the driver and, and maybe make a, an errant shot. So they're going to be able to uh, play the same course just at a shorter distance with, uh, with their father, their mother, their, their older brother, sister, that sort of stuff. Uh, the TF Ford is great for new golfers who have just gotten involved in the game, uh, hopefully making it more fun because once again by limiting the yardage the, the thought is that uh, you're going to be a little bit less shots you're going to make to get around the course and uh, uh, because we want to make the game be fun. The other great thing about Tee It Forward is great for what I term mature golfers. In other words, individuals that's played for a number of years that has steadily seen their drives uh, decrease over time. Tee It Forward can just keep you in the game. Uh, Tee It Forward allows you the opportunity to keep playing the game. Uh, it doesn't mean because you can't drive the, the, the ball 300 yards anymore that you still can't be involved in the game. And that's the great thing about Tee It Forward. The next uh, element of our Grow Golf campaign is, the, uh, is our texting program with the golf courses. If you text Join Golf to 270-681-3828, uh, you'll start getting specials and discounts for our golf courses. Uh, we try to do one on a weekly basis and it's going to uh, save you money, give you alerts on what our courses are doing, uh, upcoming events, tournaments, uh, just fun outings that we have coming up, uh, maybe discounts in the pro shop. Uh, so the, the great thing about the, uh, the, uh, the Join Golf is it pays off for you to join in for that. Uh, and then last but not least, is we have a, a, a unique volunteer program with our city golf courses. It's individuals that volunteer uh, approximately eight hours per week can earn uh, free or reduced rates on, on golf. So in other words, they're doing some labor, some you know, helping us with golf carts, uh, cleaning some things with us, uh, helping, helping in the pro shop. They're kind of giving to our courses and then they get back uh, through either free or reduced rates of golf. And all those things uh, we think are going to grow the game of golf. Well, mainly I started out uh, Wanted something to do in the evenings, not just sit around. Uh, a friend of mine suggested I put in for the volunteer program because he told me I could you know, receive some benefits as far as free golf and uh, discounts on products and things like that. Uh, and it's worked out well for me. I've done it uh, for the past six years. And I've really enjoyed it. Met a lot of nice people and uh, enjoy playing the public golf courses. We have three really nice public golf courses. The least expensive course here is Riverview, but it still offers a very challenging course uh, for a minimal expense. For the person that doesn't want to be bound to the private course, they have to pay a monthly expense uh, that only plays a few rounds a year, the public course is a place to go. The Golf Maintenance Division is continually working to keep the golf courses in pristine condition. In addition, they strive to keep the courses economically friendly for players and are environmentally conscious of natural habitat in and around the courses. Our responsibility is to do daily maintenance and, uh, and long-term planning too for the golf course, but we do daily maintenance on mowing greens, tees, fairways, roughs. Uh, we maintain the lakes and ponds that we have here, which, you know, People think you just have lakes and ponds, they're there, but there's a lot of maintenance that goes into keeping them looking nice. Uh, we have uh, about 40 bunkers at Crosswinds that uh, take quite a bit of maintenance and about 15 bunkers over at Paul Walker Golf Course that take a lot of maintenance. We are staffed with uh, seven full-time employees year-round and, and then we have 11 seasonal staff. Uh, and all these employees could be working at one of the courses at, at one time or another. We're really trying to utilize our staff at all three courses. And a lot of the things that we do on a golf course is done in the mornings before the golfers ever get there. So we're, we're kind of the, the, the guys behind the scene. Uh, we try to mow as much as we can without disturbing the golfer. Uh, a lot of the other things that go into maintaining a golf course is uh, we have irrigation systems at all three. Uh, at Crosswinds and Paul Walker now, we have the ability to operate with computers that actually control our irrigation system. 
uh, and that means there's wiring in the ground that we have to maintain and troubleshoot, um, do scheduling for irrigation. Also, um, we have to do uh, fertilizer and pesticide applications, and uh, that's getting more and more sophisticated every year. We have uh, two full-time uh, irrigation spray technicians, and that's pretty much their predominant job is is to apply the chemicals and, and fertilizers, and then they also help maintain our irrigation system. Things that go into maintaining a golf course that a lot of people don't uh, realize is, uh, is equipment maintenance. Um, we have about 271 pieces of what we call mobile equipment, things that we you know, utilize at all three courses from time to time, but it takes, it takes a lot of care and maintenance to uh, keep those up and running in, in good, uh, safe operational condition. Uh, we installed new greens at Paul Walker Golf Course, and we've done a lot of work at Paul Walker, but uh, we installed new champion greens, which are Bermuda-style uh, greens. Uh, had nothing but positive results there. Uh, it reduces pesticide inputs, uh, reduces maintenance somewhat, and the quality of the greens during the summer months is just phenomenal. They're, they're doing really well. We've been trying to reduce cost uh, more and more each year. We've been developing some no-mow areas, or we call them naturalized areas in the golf business. And basically it's taking an area that, that doesn't affect play um, and, and just not mowing it anymore, letting it go to its natural state. These areas reduce cost. It also provides for wildlife habitat, which is another positive in our business. And you know, sometimes we get a bad rap in the golf business as not being environmentally conscious or, uh, or you know, protecting the environment, but I think it's just the opposite. I think we provide habitat for wildlife. The things we do on golf courses are very, very responsible as far as the way we apply and the way we, the way we uh, go about our approaches as far as controlling weeds and pests out on the golf course. The other thing that we've really made a conscious effort here in the last year is to start working more hand in hand with other divisions and departments. In the last uh, year, we've, we've built a, a new uh, storage facility for our equipment at Crosswinds Golf Course uh, with the help of Parks Maintenance. They've got some skilled tradesmen on there. They're, you know, they can pour concrete, they can you know, build the structures. You know, we don't have that expertise on our staff, but other departments do, and, it, and it's a big plus you know, for, for all city departments to do that. And, you know, we're going to continue to do that in the future. I just urge everyone to come out and play our golf courses. Uh, if you haven't played them in a while, you know, I urge you to come back. All three golf courses are in great condition right now. We really feel like we offer a great experience and a, and a great quality uh, golf course at all three of our facilities. And uh, we urge everyone to come out and play them. And I think you'll agree with me. If you would like to learn more about this or any other Spotlight on Bowling Green program, contact City Hall at 393-3000.